In the previous video, we finished making our header component. And in this video, I am finally going to take it one step ahead. I am going to tell you what is state. I'm going to tell you what are props and then we are finally going to build our search box component, this one. So yes, let's get started. Let me start off with a simple theory. Basically, you don't need to worry about all these difficult terminologies like state and props. It is very simple. A state is nothing but a piece of data that you might need to save that might change in future. So the reason for that change can be anything. It You might need to display it on the screen or you might need it for some operations in future. But the data is something that you might need to save. So I'll repeat myself. A state is nothing but a piece of data that you might need to save for rendering in future or for performing some, some actions in future. Anything, any data. It can be a text, it can be a number, it can be any data structure. So yes, a state is nothing but simply a piece of data that you might need to save that might change in future. So yes, let's have a little bit of code related discussion about it. So uh, let's try to implement our state. For example, let's say be, be, uh, just below this header component, we need to show some sort of text and that text might change with time. Like there's no logic behind it. Uh, just, just try to un imagine it. So there's some piece of text that is being shown here and that might change with time. So that, so basically we need to store it in our state. So let's discuss how we are going to do that. So basically there are, there are two ways. Uh, one is the older way and one is the new way. So the new way is basically just declaring the object state as well. In React, state is implemented using a JavaScript object. For those who are not coming from a JavaScript background, an object might trigger a different element in your mind. Basically, an object is not that oops object here. An object in JavaScript just means a key value pair, very, very similar to dictionary in other languages. So yes, a, an object is nothing but a key value pair. That is it. So just remember that. So React uses JavaScript object to implement state. So this is the new way of uh, actually maintaining, maintaining a state. So all you need to do is define the state here. And remember that you cannot change the name. This is something which react.component provides us. So you can't do th something like my state or something like this. This so state has to be, the name of the state has to be state. So yes, in here I can save, uh, I can have something like uh, uh, my header text or something like that. So let's save it like this is a cool app. And let's let's render it inside our render function it's going to be very very simple all we need to do is we can access so always there is something to remember we can access any variable inside our jsx using curly braces so always remember that so i am going to render this header text inside my let's say h3 um, h3 tag and i am going to put it inside this dot state dot header text so let me tell you the logic behind it. Basically this, this corresponds to the class. This class has a state object inside which there's a header text. So that's as simple as that. So if we save it and it's going to render here, this is a cool app and nice. So this is something that we can save. This might change in future. So all we need to do is change this. Let's say hello world. And this will automatically reflect in the, in the, Place which we are using it. The best thing about React and the state which React uses is that all we need to do is update the state and it will automatically figure out wherever that state is being used and based on that it will re-render our component and wherever it needs to be re-rendered. So for example, let's build a very very simple example here. Um, this is something off topic but let's, let's just do it. So for example, I'll create a button and I'll say uh, magic happens here. Uh, let's, 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 this is a simple, very simple example. Magic happens here. 
so in that button whenever this button is clicked for example i'll put an on click handler so this is a synthetic event this is not an html dom event this is a react synthetic event you can uh, go and check it more about it but it does the same exact same thing as a simple dom event which is on click so inside our on click it will uh, call a function so inside that function let's do one thing let's uh, change our header text to be this dot state dot header text this is something which i'm going to do which you should never do always remember that you will, this is something which you should never ever do so let's see what is going to happen let us change that header text to something like uh, did magic happen so let's try to do this cool let me refresh this and see when i click on this what do you think will happen i clicked on it but nothing happened but to your surprise this header text actually did got changed it did not show here but it did got changed let me let me prove myself i'll just make it instead of a one liner i'll make it a, a normal function and in here i am now going to log console.log and inside here i am going to put this dot state dot header text let's see what happens let me open my javascript console here and let us click did you see i am logging the header text and the header text is did magic happen but the hello world text did not change why is it so very very simple because just updating the state manually does not trigger a re-render always always keep this in your mind it's a very very essential fact that changing the piece of state directly does not trigger a re-render we have to use something which is called set state so instead of directly uh, assigning a new value to state we have to use this dot set state and then this function we have to pass on the value of the new piece of state for example so now it is going to be let's say header text is now going to be whoa it's the new header text and let's see now what happens let me remove that log statement we don't require that any longer and let's see what happens i am going to click here magic happens here and see the magic happened so yes this is all about state a state is nothing but a sort of a piece of data which might change in future which you might need to show in 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 any of your component or which you might need to perform any uh, operation that needs to be saved so yes let us do one thing now uh, let us understand props so yes let let me remove all these things let me remove this button uh, because we don't actually need this and let me remove this h3 as well so now let us discuss what is a prop you have to listen to me very carefully here this is very very important basically a lot of people confuse between what is called a state and what is called a prop a state remember a state is nothing but an object a javascript object where we can save the data that might change in future a prop is a sort of data that we can transfer that we can transport that we can communicate from our parent component to our child component so let me show you that component architecture diagram so here the app is the main parent component which has three children header search box results container and result container in turn has the name card childs so yes let's say in case we need to pass something from our app component to let's say search box or let's say header component we are going to do that through props i repeat myself this is very important trust me guys a state is nothing but a, a piece of data that we need to save for future a prop whereas is a piece of data that we need to communicate from parent to child let's see it in action here so basically this name it instead of hard coding it in our in our header i am going to use it in through props so i have stay, saved the state here so let's say i am going to say this is header and now i am going to pass on so app is one component and header is another component so now i am going to pass on this this state this header text as a prop to my header 
so this might sound familiar to you if you know uh, html in html as well we uh, sort of pass on some attributes so this is not that attribute this is actually a prop so we call it a prop here so we can name it like uh, head title something like that the name can be anything that you want and in here we can pass on this dot state dot header text as simple as that so now this head title will be accessible from inside our header container uh, header component how are we going to do that simple if it's a functional component if it was a class based component we can access those props using this dot props dot the name of the prop if it's a functional component it is going to be passed down as an argument this is going to pass down as an argument in the props as a first argument so now instead of hard coding our name it we can actually use our inside the curly braces always remember it's a variable so yeah props dot head title and now you're going to see the magic happen it is automatically changed it is now this is a header that is super cool awesome so now what we are going to do is now let's quickly rename it to name it because the name of our application is name it not this is a header and now you know the difference between state and props i know i hope this video was very very knowledgeable so yes now you know what is a state now you know what is a prop and how can you pass on data from a parent component to a child component this was very very important trust me guys uh, you have mastered 40% of the react if you know the difference the concept of these two things so as you might remember in the starting i was telling you this uh, that this is the new way of declaring state the old way of declaring state was like this you have to use a constructor and inside that constructor first of all you would have to use a super method after calling the super you would set this dot state equal to this so this is the almost the same thing as that this does the same thing you uh, you can verify name it let's say name it here and it is going to change so yeah that's one and the same thing uh, that was just the newer implementation of state and now before ending this video let us quickly very quickly build our search box component again the same thing uh, you need to do is create a new folder inside the components and name it search box uh, and create a css file as well as a jsx file uh, search box.jsx and i'll copy it just to copy the name and i'll create another file which is searchbox.css and inside that that's it let us quickly quickly very quickly this is going to be a very simple um very very simple component and so let's build it very quickly i am going to make it functional component once more because this is a very very simple component i'm going to use arrow function esx arrow function and return um let's say uh, div let me name it to be search container i prefer having a div containers in every component that just keeps my code consistent consistent and very cool so this whole component is nothing but an input inside that input we can add something like a placeholder uh, let's say type your type keywords that should be enough i think to type keywords and let's have a class name let's put it a class selector to be search input how does that sound that sounds cool to me and let's see and don't forget to export it so export uh, export default search box and then once you do that don't forget to import it in the app components just below my header i am going to show my search box very simple it's going to be search box and my text editor vs code automatically imported the search box for me and i'm super grateful to vs code so now as you can see uh, this search box appeared here let us quickly very quickly style our search box and then we can move on to the next section so yes let me import my dot slash search box dot css file so that we can 
uh, quickly import the styles and let's first of all uh, make since again we want to have it centered here right so let's again uh, use flexbox i'll use the flex uh, the uh, direction as row and the flex direction as row and then justify content as center that is a very very simple change if you don't know flexbox don't worry just follow along for now and i promise to create a full video on flexbox full series on flexbox soon enough maybe in upcoming months but don't worry about that uh, for now you can just follow along so i'm going to display flex and justify content as center and that is going to do my changes and i'll just put in a small margin of let's say 10 pixel 10 pixel should be good enough for me and see the magic happened it is very very cool so this is very very awesome and now let's before ending this video let us quickly style the search box which is search input as well so i'm just going to copy and place the class selector let's first of all put some padding let's say 8 pixel and 15 pixel um, yeah that seems cool to me uh let's put the font size to be 15 pixels let's see how it looks like yeah now it looks much better you can even leave it here as well it, it looks quite good even as of now but if you want to follow along you can follow along so that it looks like this somewhere like this so yes um it's it's completely up to you so now uh, let's put a uh, let's say width of 250 pixel yeah that seems pretty much fine to me and a border width of zero i don't want any borders so border width of zero and then let us put a uh, uh, let's say border color uh, background color yeah let's put the background color to be uh, this color is basically this is another cool color which is uh, a59 if i remember correctly 2f2 a59 2f2 if i remember correctly let's see yes that is it now let's change the color as well let's change the color to be our own uh, font color which was e7 e9 f0 uh it was 9f0 i think yeah but as you see nothing will change here because this is a placeholder for placeholder you will have to do those things separately but if you type here something you will see that the color has been changed let me apply the styles for the placeholder as well search input and then i'll select my placeholder selector and then inside my placeholder i am going to show the color as hashtag same e7 uh, 9f6 this seems good and now this has also changed let me quickly very quickly uh put in some more things for example when we focus it it shows an outline so i don't want that so for that i can make a search input on focus on focus i want outline to be none that should do it and let us do one more thing uh let us put some border radius of let's say 50 pixel that should be cool enough and let's put some some box shadow to have some shadow in it and uh, let's say uh, how about zero zero five pixel and then the color would can be i need to be i need to it to be white but with some alpha value so let's say rgba and then 255 255 255 0.5 this sounds pretty cool to me and yeah that is enough i think that is enough for uh yeah that seems enough and that is it we are done for uh with, with the two components and we have understood what is a state what is props and so on in the next video we are finally going to see how are we going to animate this simple simple header just like this let's say hi it goes small and when we move that back it goes big again so see you in the next video that is it for this video bye bye